as you all know that the International Forum for Promoting Homeopathy comprises of homeopathic doctors, students, and homeopathic lovers. A forum that connects between doctors as well as uh, homeopathic lovers all over the world. And we have presentations from uh, people around the world that is not more than 65 countries participated in our presentations. And we have three sessions in a row. Uh, seven to eight, we have our in Hindi session. Eight to nine, we have our international session in English. And nine to 10, we have a local language session in Malayalam. Today, uh, on the 1340th day, our guest is uh, Dr. Deepthi Anand. As you all know that Dr. Deepthi Anand has presented a session, some three to four sessions in our uh, webinar session earlier. And today, uh, a doctor will be talking about one of the best subjects, as you know, one of the common subjects also. And uh, you may get in your daily day to day practice anemia in pregnant women. So let me introduce uh, Dr. Dithyanan. Uh, she is working as an assistant professor, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, SVET, Sri Veerapadreshwar Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital, Tidar, Karnataka, and practicing in North Karnataka since 13 years and has clinical experience in treating various clinical conditions like thyroid disorders, female compliance, and infertility. It has, pre has presented papers in various platforms like Karnataka Qualified Homeopathic Doctors Association, Bangalore, Karnataka, and uh, uh, many other uh, uh, stages she has presented papers. So let us invite our beloved guest, uh, Dr. Deepthi Anand, to the session. You are welcome, madam. I shall make you co-host now, then you can talk. Okay, okay, you can. Good evening, all of you. Namaste. As you, as uh, our uh, beloved sir has introduced, I am Dr. Deepthi Anand. Today, I'll be speaking about anemia during pregnancy. Okay. I thought this is a very uh, concerning issue today. Uh, because most of the Indian, um, most of the pregnant women are from rural India. Huh? And iron deficiency anemia is the most common. Hope I'm audible, sir. Yes, everything fine. Uh, yes. You are present. sharing the screen. Yes, yes, I'm sharing the screen. Okay. I'm there. No, I'm, I'm not doing any PPT. I'm just explaining. Okay, okay. Okay. So, iron Iron deficiency anemia is very common because most of the pregnant pregnant women, most most of the people in India are from rural India. That is why I wanted to discuss anemia during pregnancy. It is the commonest hematological disorder which is bothering women, pregnant women. Okay. And to, if you want to know the incidence, it's around the incidence varies very in a very wide range. It is from around 40 to 80 percent. Incidence in India is around 40 to 80 percent because it depends on degree of anemia, type of anemia and cause of anemia. It depends on the degree, type and cause of anemia. Okay. And usually almost it accounts for 20 percent of maternal deaths in the third world countries. 20 percent of maternal deaths is it is not a joke. It's really a big number. Huh? So, if you want to study further about anemia, anemia during pregnancy can be classified into two types. First is physiological anemia. Next is pathological anemia. Okay. Physiological anemia is mainly because of two problems. Physiological anemia is mainly because of two things which we have to remember here. First of all, during pregnancy, the blood counts, that is RBC, there is overall increased in the volume. There, were, there is overall increase in the blood volume, which leads to dilution of blood. RBCs also increase. Okay. And blood volume also increases. 
this leads to apparent fall in the hemoglobin concentration. Hemoglobin concentration, what we say MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. There is a fall in that. Okay. And one more. So this is the first cause for physiological anemia during pregnancy. Second cause is there is increased iron demand. Okay. Say, for example, the lady, lady has already sufficient iron reserves. That is, she is from a well-off family. She takes good food, healthy diet, lots of fruits and vegetables. If she's already prepared before pregnancy, then <clears throat> she can go through the pregnancy smoothly if if the if there is malnourishment she is uh, she is having only uh, she is she cannot afford fruits and all she can have only regular meals per day then she will have anemia okay mild to moderate anemia and there are other women also like this labor class people who cannot afford two meals also properly okay in such people when they get pregnant they'll definitely have moderate to severe anemia during pregnancy, okay? So, the main two main causes for physiological anemia are, first one is increase in the blood volume, which causes fall of hemoglobin concentration. Second is increased iron demand, okay? So, these two we have to remember. These two can be easily corrected. And if... If you have to, if you want to confirm whether the anemia is physiological, you have to go for peripheral smear. Peripheral smear will be normocytic, normochromic. If the peripheral smear shows normocytic, normochromic anemia, then that is physiological anemia in pregnancy. Okay. So now, if we want to see what is pathological anemia, causes for pathological anemia, first is deficiency, iron deficiency. Then, hemorrhagic anemia, iron deficiency. See, deficiency anemia, major is iron deficiency. There may be other deficiencies also like protein. Then, uh, vitamin B, vitamin C. For production of hemoglobin, protein, vitamin B12, folic acid and vitamin C are required along with iron. When all these factors are there, Okay, see, basically anemia, whoever it may be, either pregnant women or not, anemia basically either to deficiency anemia depends on two things. First is reduced intake. Second is faulty absorption. These two we have to remember. First is reduced intake. Second is faulty absorption. So, when usually during pregnancy, what happens is deficiency may be deficiency of absorption of any of these uh, sources or any of these raw materials, what I told. Iron, folic acid, vitamin B12 and vitamin C. Iron absorption requires acidic pH of the stomach. Okay. So, during pregnancy generally what happens due to vomiting, hyperemesis, the pregnant uh, woman is given a lot of antacids. That also inhibits iron intake because iron requires Acidic pH for absorption. Okay. As gastric uh, acid. Acidic pH is required for proper iron absorption. Okay. So, that uh, this is deficiency anemia. Next is hemorrhagic diseases. Say, for example, bleeding during pregnancy. Huh? It may be acute bleeding in the early months or antepartum hemorrhage. Antepartum hemorrhage. Or there may be hookworm infestation, parasitic infestation in the intestines, which may cause anemia. Or bleeding piles, hemorrhoids, bleeding hemorrhoids can also cause blood loss and anemia. Next is hematological disorders like sickle cell anemia, jaundice or acquired malaria. These things can also cause anemia during pregnancy. Okay. So, and bone marrow insufficiency or Hypoplasia, bone marrow insufficiency or hypoplasia can also cause the anemia in pregnant women. Okay, next. So, criteria for physiological anemia. As I told, when can you decide it is a physiological anemia? First of all, 
it is normocytic normochromic as i told you peripheral smear shows normocytic normochromic and hemoglobin percentage is 10 grams at least 10 grams not less than that okay and rbc count total rbc count is 3.2 million cells per cubic millimeter of blood and pack cell volume will be around 32 percent okay next as i told you there are requirements for erythropoiesis minerals vitamins protein and iron minerals is iron vitamins vitamin b12 and folic acid protein is amino acids for globin formation and erythropoietin hormone required for the production the stimulation of the bone marrow stimulation of the stem cells of the bone marrow for erythropoiesis that is production of rbcs and hemoglobin so Usually, erythropoietin is secreted from the kidney and liver. And in pregnant women, placenta also secretes some erythropoietin. Okay. So, this is about physiological anemia. Hope everything is clear till now. Uh, next, causes of increased prevalence of anemia in tropicals. What is the cause of increased prevalence of anemia in tropical countries? India is also a tropical country, subtropical and subtropical country. So, that is why what is the main what are the causes before pregnancy see you generally women once once they get married and to go to their in-laws place then they'll take time to get adjusted that may be there there they may not be having sufficient food or it is not that they have some problem okay maybe they are they are uh, homesick because they have changed their place or there may be real problem in the in-laws with the husband with the mother-in-law, father-in-law, whatever. So that may also cause her to not eat properly. So there are no iron reserves, proper iron reserves. Okay. This is about before pregnancy. Faulty diet. Next is faulty absorption. As I told earlier, a severe use of uh, uh, abuse of antacids can lead to improper absorption or deficient absorption of iron. Next. Iron loss. And this is also very important. One more, one more important cause for anemia during pregnancy is less space between children. Okay. A woman should, woman requires two years after childbirth to recover, to get back her iron because one pregnancy delivery and lactation, one pregnancy delivery and lactation can cause a loss of 1000 grams, 1000 milligrams, sorry, 1000 milligrams of iron. Okay. So, to recover from this loss, a woman requires two years after childbirth. So, inadequate spacing between two children can also cause anemia in pregnancy, recurring pregnancies and prolonged period of lactation. See, generally, lactation, one and a half to two years, we should stop. There are some people, they think if we would give lactation for a longer period of time, child will be very strong. No, that is not, that is a myth actually. That is not right. Okay. So, prolonged lactation for more than two years. Hmm? So, the all these things will cause anemia. All these things are, in, to, in some other, one or the other point, it will lead to anemia. Okay. Next, during pregnancy. Increased demand. That is a matter of demand supply. Increased demand, less intake. Next, diminished intake. And sometimes what happens is, even though the pregnant lady is eating well, if he is not having a balanced diet, that also will cause iron deficiency. See, even though she is taking iron-rich food, if she is not taking proper protein, uh, or if she is taking a lot of carbohydrates, or if she is taking a lot of phosphates, and phytates along with iron that will form insoluble iron phytate and phosphate compounds which are not absorbed. They are just excreted. Okay, they go waste. So that is also important. So having a proper balanced diet is also important. Even though you are eating a lot of iron rich foods, it is not, in, in, uh, absorption is as important as intake. So both are equally important. Next. Diminished, I told you, in decreased intake, decreased absorption. Next, 
disturbed metabolism. Disturbed metabolism can also cause anemia. And as I told you earlier, excessive demand in case of multiple pregnancies, rapid recurring pregnancy and teenage pregnancies. Because for the iron stores to be saturated, the girl should be at least 20 years old. Okay. So teenage pregnancies can also cause iron deficiency anemia. So what are the what are the clinical features we see in the iron deficiency anemia? First of all, as like any other anemia, clinical features here are also they may be it is mostly asymptomatic if it is mild. Okay. Next, sometimes there is lassitude and fatigue, general weakness. She cannot climb stairs. She cannot walk for a long time. Okay. She feels tired. That is. And you most of the times, this anemia is detected during routine examination. Okay. Generally, as soon as a woman gets pregnant, there is a protocol which we have to follow, which we'll check. First, we'll check hemoglobin, thyroid hormones. Then we'll go for general CBC and urine routine. That is quite common with a scan, ultrasound abdomen. So, this, in this, it is routine during routine examination. Most of the anemia cases are detected during routine examination because most of the patients are asymptomatic. Okay, other symptoms are lassitude, weakness, fatigue, then anorexia, unable to eat, indigestion, palpitations due to ectopic beats. When the anemia is severe, she can feel palpitations. Okay, then dyspnea, that is what? Breathlessness, uh, minimum walking. Climbing stairs, she'll have breathlessness, giddiness, and also swelling in the legs. So these are the quite common symptoms. On examination, there is pallor. Okay. On examination, there is pallor of varying degree. Then glossitis, stomatitis, that is swelling of the gums, swelling of the gums, swelling and oral mucosa, there is swelling, there are mouth ulcers. Then edema of legs, soft systolic murmur. If the anemia is severe, there may be soft systolic murmur. Okay. And also crepitations at the base of the lung due to collection. Hmm? These are the point signs we see on examination. Hmm? Next is investigations. What investigations we have to do? Investigation is mainly to know about the degree of anemia type of anemia and cause of anemia. Degree of anemia, there are three three degrees of anemia. First is mild, when the hemoglobin percentage is 10. Okay. Hemoglobin percentage is 8 to 10, that is mild. 7 to 8 is moderate. Less than 7 is severe anemia. Okay. This we have to keep in mind. Type of anemia is assessed by peripheral smear. As I told you, physiological anemia during pregnancy Peripheral smear will show normocytic, normochromic picture. Uh, and hematological in indices, that is mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration, mean corpuscular volume, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and all these are important. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is the most sensitive test in iron deficiency. Okay. Then to know the cause of anemia, we can... Take proper history. Okay. See, for example, uh, she is from a rural background or she is from a lower socioeconomic status. So, malnutrition can lead to deficiency disorder. Or stool examination. Stool examination can reveal occult blood, which may show parasitic infestation. And also clinical examination will also, uh, there also we can know the cause of anemia. Then urine examination to know if there is any hemoglobinuria. Okay. And then vitamin B levels are also important to know. Okay. So these are the investigations which we can do. Next, blood values on iron deficiency anemia. So what is the criteria? Iron deficiency anemia, what will be the blood values? Hemoglobin will be less than 10 as I told you. Total RBC will be less than 4 million. 4 million cells per cubic millimeter. Pack cell volume will be less than 30. Mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration will be less than 30. Mean corpuscular volume will be less than 75 microliters. 
mean corpuscular hemoglobin will be less than 25 picograms. Okay. Total iron binding capacity will be more. If you if we, if we check iron profile, total iron binding capacity will be more than 400. And serum ferritin will be less than 30. Okay. And uh, saturation will be less than 10%. Okay, but serum bilirubin levels will be normal. Okay, so these are the blood values in iron deficiency anemia. So how can we diagnose differential, differential diagnosis of anemia? Even in infection, there is inflammation. Even in infection, there is there may be swelling. Even in preeclampsia, that is when there is hypertension, preeclampsia is one of the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. So even during in that case also there is swelling of legs and feet huh? and also hemoglobinopathies. So this is the differential diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Okay. So what are the complications of anemia in pregnant women? Before that is during pregnancy, what are the complications? Increased chances of preeclampsia. If there is anemia, there is increased chance of preeclampsia. Intercurrent infections, because hemoglobin is less, then it leads to low immunity, which causes intercurrent infections, infections on and off. Next, heart failure at 30 to 32 weeks. Heart failure can happen when the lady is 32 weeks pregnant. 30 to 32 weeks pregnant, it can be heart failure when the anemia is severe. Then preterm labor. Preterm chances of preterm labor increases when there is when the lady is anemic during pregnancy. During labor, what all can happen? Postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage is very common in anemia during pregnancy. Then cardiac failure, as I told you, when the anemia is severe. Then shock due to hypovolemia or due to hypoxia. Shock due to hypoxia. In pure perium, that is after delivery, within first 10 days, what can happen? There may be puerperal sepsis because of low immunity. First of all, there will be low immunity following delivery. If there is anemia, there may be puerperal sepsis. Poor lactation, the lady will have, will not, we will not be able to produce sufficient milk. That is because of anemia, poor lactation. Puerperal venous thrombosis can happen. Venous thrombosis, then pulmonary embolism. So, these are the complications of anemia during pregnancy and during labor. Okay. Next, on baby, what is the effect on baby? See, usually even though the woman, mother is pregnant, uh, the pregnant mother is iron deficient or anemic, the child will not become anemic because whether the mother has, no, has a iron whether the mother has hemoglobin or not, child is a parasite. The growing fetus is a parasite. It will grow at all cost of the mother. Okay. It, it, there is no rule. Actually, it is not at all there. No, no anemia will be there in the newborn who is born to a anemic mother. Okay. But there are chances of IUD. Because the mother is anemic, she is not able to hold it anymore. There may be chances of IUD during labor. Okay. So these are the, and again, chances of preterm labor. Low birth weight. Low birth weight is, the chances of low birth weight is more because of preterm labor. Okay. So these are the effects on baby. So what are the risk periods? Yeah. About 30 to 32 weeks, if the anemia is severe, the lady may die. These are the risk periods where there are chances of mortality. Huh? Next, during labor, because of PPH, as I told, the lady may collapse. Next, immediately following delivery due to infection. And 7 to 10 days postpartum. Okay. So, these are the complications. And subinvolution is also one of the complications of anemia during pregnancy. Subinvolution is the uterus will not Involute or come back to pre-pregnant state normally, in a normal way. Okay. So, these are the complications of anemia during pregnancy, during labor and 
during after child birth okay next so what how, how how can we correct it see always prevention is better than cure so how can we correct it first of all before getting pregnant it is better to counsel see that is what if they take a pre pregnancy counseling you can ask them check their hemoglobin ask them to uh, uh what do you say have proper sources okay uh, if if it, if no if it is not there if it's rural area patient are not so so educated at least you can correct it during pregnancy that is by advising them to take proper balanced diet okay local foods are most important like see for say for example lentils and dry fruits are high in iron and protein so it's better they have uh, what do you say sprouts proteins all these lentils every day with green leafy vegetables so that way green leafy vegetables also have more iron and it provides with supplementary protein the lentils provide with supplementary protein so it is better to uh, uh, ask the patient to take more of dal or this curry with lot of lentils rice is less or carbohydrates or at least half of the carbohydrates they have to have proteins okay curds all protein sources should be increased and if the diet is mixed they can have egg egg is a very good source of protein it provides almost all amino acids so they can have if they if they are if they are comfortable and if they don't have any allergies they can have almost one egg per day okay that gives a good source of protein huh then how what else you can advise is if they are having fruits dry fruits it's better they have one dry fruit per time it's better they don't mix dry fruits and that is almonds and cashews together no only one dry fruit per time and that also there should be a gap of 1 hour between the meals that is they should have dry fruits either 1 hour before food or 1 hour after food okay that way iron absorption will increase because the food will not interfere in the iron making it organic iron iron phosphate and iron phytate okay that way iron absorption is increased and also it's better to avoid taking antacids if possible it's better to take and uh, avoid taking antacids because beta blockers and proton pump blockers can cause malabsorption of iron even though the food is rich in iron okay so the, by taking a balanced diet at proper intervals small meals at regular intervals can improve iron deficiency anemia and one fruit which is really rich in iron is figs anjeer what we call that is really rich in iron that can be had frequently that is again any fruit dry fruit or nuts should be had one hour before food or one hour after food so that it will not be the iron absorption is now is not interrupted by presence of food okay this is about dietary correction huh then so what are the remedies if you come for the homeopathic part the rubrics what you can search for in the kent repertory actually in the synthesis repertory there is a direct rubric called anemia okay and there are so many remedies you can also look for other rubrics like anemia in nursing mothers acetic acid see again there is swelling acetic acid then anemia the main remedies for anemia are as you can see arsal borax ferramet ferram ars calcarea fos calcarea carb graphitis madorinum 
Marxol, Natromur, Platina, Pulsatilla, Staphysagria, Sulfur. Okay, so Moscus. So these are the main remedies for main remedies for anemia, which can be considered even during pregnancy. Okay. So now we'll see the remedies one by one. If you want to see our salve. Huh? Our salve, as we all know, it is given in chlorotic women. We have to consider the, see, again, I may have suggested some remedies, but there is no hard and fast rule that you should give that remedy only. Always, I always tell the same thing. I always suggest that you take a proper case, complete case, repertorize the case, and then see the symptoms if they are similar to any remedy. That is, their symptom similarity should match, symptoms should match to the remedy. Only then you prescribe in the dosage is again depending on experience. Okay. Huh? So it is better always to go by your experience, take the proper case, repertorize. There are no specific remedies in homeopathy. You should always repertorize and then see Materia Medica match the case, only then you can give. Okay. Generally, we I I practice giving 50 millisimal potency. That is 0 bar 1, 0 bar 2. Generally, I give, I prefer that. If it is not available, you can go as low as 12, 6, 12, maximum is 30. Okay. And if you are giving in centesimal potency, it's better to give single dose or minimum dose, two or three doses. That's all. Okay. This is what I suggest. And there are all remedies, as I told you. So many remedies are there. And all of your homeopathy doctors and you know all remedies. I need not explain it differently. Okay. And all of you are experienced. So I am I'm really very, what do you say, inexperienced in front of all, you all people to tell you about remedies. Because all of you are practicing from a very long time. Huh? I just wanted to enlighten on causes of anemia. Which I felt was is very common these days during pregnancy. Okay. So, any questions you can ask? Yes. Good uh, Dr. Deepthi Anand, it's really a very good session. Even though uh, there was no slide uh, you shared, uh, the content of the, the presentation really thrilled us because uh, you covered all the parts of the uh, what are the reasons for this anemia? How can be can be corrected? What are the food to, to be taken? What kind of foods are required? And how can one differentiate uh, uh, anemia from in a pregnant lady from other uh, uh, side? And of course, uh, what will happen to whether the child uh, born to a, an anemic lady is also anemic or not, but frankly, it is not. You rightly point out that the child will take everything from the mother, whether it is just as you told the, uh, in the presentation that it is just like a parasite, the, the child can take anything in the body of the mother and that really uh, gives the child health and wealth. Of course, this is what uh, I felt about the presentation, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, we can have some more presentation uh, from you because you are a person who can deliver with power. And that is what is uh, what I have noted in this uh, presentation. And those who want to participate in the discussion can raise your hand or open your video so that we will allow you to unmute yourself and you can have a chat with uh, Dr. Deepthi Anand. Uh, already there's a question uh, in the chat box. Uh, what are the kind of foods? Uh, some, uh, Dr. Eliama, John, uh, as food. I told, all dry fruits. Yes, uh, dry yes. fruits, nuts, and specifically, if I should say, figs. Anjir, what we say, is really rich in iron. Okay. And uh, it is not a compulsion that you eat anjir every day. See, if it is seasonal, of course, you can eat. Or you can eat dry anjir also. Okay, and eating only anjir will not give full iron. As I told you, I, I full hemoglobin. As I told you, anjir can provide iron, but other things are also needed like proteins, vitamins, 
mineral everything else is needed even uh, traces of co copper and cobalt are also needed for proper hemoglobin production okay figs are uh, just supplements and i also want to highlight one point because mo most of the women as i have seen at least 40 to 45% of women are allergic to iron tonics and iron supplements even during pregnancy it causes severe gastric irritation okay so but, but sometimes when the anemia is severe you cannot avoid it but if it is mild to moderate with food balanced diet you can definitely improve and avoid taking them definitely some people some of the pregnant lady used to visit us and uh, it all like this, uh, Joe, doctor, I, I am uh, not able to take this allopathic medicine because it's full of gas and I, it forces me to vomit. So in those conditions, can you give some other, some may, kind of medicine from you? So we uh, definitely, we have a lot of medicine, Paramet. Yes, Paramet. Paramet is a very good remedy. Of course, even Paramphos is also very calcarea force. Uh, uh, these are this, uh, also uh, giving uh, excellent result in those conditions. Yes, exactly. And uh, uh, some uh, some of our uh, tinges also uh, do one this in uh, this kind of person. Uh, I invited uh, Dr. Sridhar uh, to say a few more points on this. What are what are the kind of uh, what kind of uh, foods or what or what kind of uh, uh, tinges can be used? Uh, nowadays, uh, some uh, companies are make uh, uh, preparing homeopathic uh, uh, iron uh, tablets itself, and uh, so that can uh, even without mixing uh, different kind of medicine, they are just keeping with the same medicine. Yes, yes, either good sir, please unmute sir. You can speak, or somebody else want this way, yes, sir. Please unmute your co-host. You can speak. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And I can unmute. Wait, wait, wait. Whether? Audible, sir. Audible. Please. Uh, audible, audible, audible. Then I shall say. Yes, I was sitting, <laughs> sitting and listening. So I was uh, one minute, one minute. So <coughs> my sex is far away. So let me take one minute. So, it was very nice, madam. It was a very nice session. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And uh, it is uh, 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 the, the, this, uh, that the, during the we record, really speaking, we record the vitamins uh, and uh, uh, iron and all these things are really required because it is sometimes they it may not be sufficient in the time of uh, pregnancy or they during the time of um, delivery maybe uh, they may require more vitamins and that minerals and etc they may require little more that is my the, the my experience what I am feeling so yes sir uh, there are persons who are taking a very good food but still uh, they are lacking in uh, iron, iron what may be uh, and, uh, and the, when we examine the uh, stool and everything there is nothing wrong with the stool no parasite or nothing is there but still uh, they are not getting anemia uh, they, they are still uh, having anemia. Uh, what can be the uh, other reasons, uh, Dr. Deethi? Uh, sir, as I have told you earlier, it can be malabsorption, that is improper absorption. As I tell, if the diet is rich in carbohydrates and rich in phosphates and phytates, these will inhibit or prevent the iron absorption. And also antacids, as I told you, Iron requires an acidic pH of the stomach to get absorbed properly. So, a malabsorption is, uh, is also one of the reasons 
even though proper diet is taken okay and even uh, and you are saying that uh, you are you told sir that uh, stool examination everything is normal then we have to rule out other causes of anemia other causes of anemia like uh, b12 deficiency or is there any hemoglobinopathy okay uh, sickle cell anemia or other deficiencies other hemorrhagic disorders because hemoglobinopathies are also common during pregnancy exactly that's that's that are things to be noted here and uh, uh, there are uh, what what i have noted in is that most of the people believe that we have to give more 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 uh, rice and dam so so that is the missing but uh, instead of that they uh, we need to give a proportionate diet uh, just two cup of uh, uh, rice uh, one cup of uh, vegetables one cup of uh, uh, meat or fish like that uh, that will be the uh, ideal diet as far as pregnant ladies are concerned and not only for the pregnant day ladies but also uh, for those who have just uh, uh, started uh, breastfeeding. Yes, and, and also course, regularly uh, women who are who have anemia. Generally, they can take this balanced diet. See, and also one more, I want to add one more point here. Usually, married women, okay, not only pregnant women, married women with kids, usually they are anemic. Almost 60% of married women are anemic because they don't care for themselves how much they care for their husband and children and people in the house. They don't care much for themselves. It is like they don't, they'll not at all have anything till they pack lunch for the people in the house. They make sure that everybody will eat well. They will eat whatever is left. Or sometimes if no food is left, they'll just drink a glass of milk. Or some people I've seen, they'll just be on tea or coffee till 12 o'clock in the afternoon. After finishing all household work, they'll eat. Okay. These things are also should be avoided. See, I, I advise one thing. See, if you take care of yourself properly, only then you can take care of other people in the family. Exactly. So, so it, it is, I advise that you eat something properly. See, it is not, you will not be selfish. The, actually, that is what we have to counsel the women when, we, when they come to our clinic. You are not being selfish by eating proper food. Or you are not being selfish by taking care of yourself. Because taking care of yourself is important for you to take care of others. That is what I feel. Yes, definitely. Uh, the, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, things that uh, you have to follow. Uh, uh, usually, everybody knows that uh, the pregnancy is a physiological phenomenon. But still, people nowadays, things are entirely different. People believe that it's a disease. Disease. This is, Exactly. So that's why uh, the, the modern uh, people are also uh, forcing the people to do the, all these things every uh, uh, every two weeks or three months, uh, every month like that. So uh, it becomes a business nowadays. Impact so, of social media. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I must say that my, uh, I should say, I would like to add something to, because uh, uh, some uh, 35, uh, no, some 45 years back, my mother was working as a nurse and in the local area and she even took uh, 10 pregnancies of the uh, same mother uh, and without any any problem in the house itself. Uh, that was a condition. But uh, uh, in those days, uh, even though uh, poverty was there in um, villages, still uh, the people survived. They are having uh, very good health rather than the nowadays <laughs> children. And we must say, uh, anyway, Sridhar Rulsar is uh, there to talk to you. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Yes. Uh, yes. That uh, really, that uh, for this uh, anemia, that uh, anemia is also there that we required to take more leafy vegetables that sometimes even if may take, it may not absorb. So that in such cases, there are so many other medicines are mentioned in, uh, and also it is very good to take. The patient suffering from iron deficiency anemia 
can also increase the amount of iron in the hemoglobin by use of cast iron cooking vessels. The following foods top, top in the content meat, poultry, fish, and eggs. Whole grains, dried fruits, dark green leafy vegetables, beans, peas, lentils, and nuts are very And also, it is better not to take the coffee and tea with meals. Interferes in the absorption of iron by the body. And, and there are some other anemias are also following anemias, iron deficiency anemia. Iron can also be obtained from vegetarian foods such as beans, spinach, and nuts. Pernicious anemia. It is very rare and it results when body fails to absorb vitamin B12. Recently, we about a group of about to 20 people, they checked their vitamin uh, B12, uh, B12 and also we checked the uh, vitamin D3. Then we find out only one person it was normal. All the other words, it was deficient. Other types of anemias, it can be caused by diseases of hemoglobin molecules, uh, chronic diseases, and problems with bone health. And that the uh, other, our, some of our medicines, example, parambos, uh, such type of the medicines also very good for to be um, good for anemia. And especially in whether there is time, then I can tell something more about the anemia uh, risk factors for the mother, fetal, neonatal, and infants. During mother, during antenatal period, during inter, uh, intranatal period, during postnatal period, there are three. Uh, types that can be for the mother, it can be. For during antenatal period, poor weight gain, preterm labor, pregnancy induced hypertension, placenta previa, accidental hem hemorrhage, eclampsia, premature rupture of membrane. These are the during the antenatal period. The mother during intranatal period, dysfunctional labor, Intranatal hemorrhage, shock, anesthesia risk, cardiac failure. During postnatal period, postnatal sepsis, subinvolvation of uterus, embolism. Then, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, yes. uh, explain yeah. about all those things uh, in short. Uh, 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 okay, okay. Uh, so, so uh, if it is a Time is there, that is why I am telling. If anyone wants to talk, I am stopping here. Yes, sir. You can add uh, the what kind? What are the tinges uh, that can be used for? Uh, uh, yeah, yes. That, that was the question I asked you, sir. Oh, okay. My, my medicine general indication is at least for me, sir. It is a very good, um, good medicine for the um, uh, particular symptom is mild anemia due to the. Uh, nutritional disturbances, painting, spells with vertigo, tired, dull, heavy, and confused, suffering from prolapse of uterus, leukoria, distress, etc. That is the, that are the um, main of alertis pernosa is the medicine. That is mother finger is usually given. The second medicine is Singona officinalis, gradually progressive anemia. Face pain, hypo, uh, hypocratic eye sunken and surrounded by blue margins, weakness. These are the symptoms for the Stingona or China. And, uh, and also tinnitus, pulsating headaches with the throbbing of the carotid and crushing of the face. Yes, sir, uh, sir uh, that's why uh, Dr. Deepthi and told that you can go, uh, refer, you can take the case and refer trace. But uh, uh, the question here is, uh, what, what are the short... Uh, 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 u
natrium mode six x extra can also to be supplement. Then other medicines are potency potency medicines are carry uh, carbonic versatile. Yes, sir. Thank and you. Sir. These, these are the medicines uh, very good in uh, this thing. Very good because I am not going details. It will take time. Yes, sir. Another ten minutes. Yes, sir. The other yes, sir. Person yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Deepthi want to add something more on that. Yes, sir, sir told about Aletris farinosa. Aletris farinosa is usually used in bleeding disorders. That is abnormal uterine bleeding, dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Such cases, Aletris farinosa is used uh, mostly because there is bright red bleeding, as sir told, and. If we are thinking of Sincona, remedies like Sincona, that is China, then uh, Chininam Ars, Chininam Self, all these remedies are can be thought of when there is a history of malaria treated with quinine. Abuse of quinine if it is leading to anemia. Malaria, abuse of quinine leading to malaria. We can think of all these remedies like China that uh, and uh, Chininam Ars Chininam self, all these remedies can be thought of. That is what I wanted to add. Yes. Uh, Dr. Ramparaj, sir, sir, you can. If anybody Thank you. has any doubt, you can also. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ganeji, and congratulations, Dr. Dikti Anand, madam. Thank you, sir. Very, very thanks. Excellent session. Uh, dynamic lecture. During pregnancy anemia, physiological anemia and pathological anemia. Lekin only during pregnancy anemia, calcarea phos 6x is the best remedy. During pregnancy, yeah, or easily delivery. Yeah, easily delivery. There are many kinds of medicine, tuberculum. Carcinogen, <laughs> Calcarea Foss, Pulsatilla. So, uh, first month, yani one, one to nine months, take, taking homeopathic medicine, easily delivery and uh, prevention of anemia. <laughs> first month, tuberculum, second month, uh, syphilinum, third month, uh, हमारे सोरा प्रतिरोधक जो है सल्फर एंड सिक्स मंथ कलकरिया फॉस इज अ सूटेड रेमेडी फॉर एनीमिया एंड आफ्टर डिलीवरी चाइना इज द बेस्ट रेमेडी आवर क्लिनिक हम जो चाइना थ्री एक्स ग्लोबल्स ग्लोबल्स में जो है बहुत अच्छा काम करता है after delivery or yeah, during um, uh, lactation period, China is the best remedy. So very, very thanks, madam. Both very, very thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> If anybody want to have a chat with the Dr. Deepthi, please raise your hand or open as somebody. Uh, if you want to talk about. Uh... Yeah, some more medicine I can say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may go ahead. Uh, other medicine that can be used on symptomatic indications are. Vanadium. <laughs> And these are the things that I like to add regarding medicine you asked. That is why I included. And especially that around with the tissue remedies also for deficiencies there, especially I explained already calcarea force, cardi mood, cardi force. Natural mode, natural salt, and cilicia. These are the medicines. It is very, very good, useful in deficiencies. 
of uh, that the uh, even mad absorption also it can be covered and the deficiency also can be covered by this biochemical medicine also that i like to add okay thank you very much madam it is uh, very good let the other source may speak that i stop here thank you very much for give me and calling me and give me a chance for that okay thank you very much dr danesh and dr madam that i am so thankful to you and your uh, lecture was extremely yeah. good uh, as a uh, gynecologist in homeopathy you can come with uh, so many other conditions also thank you yes, very sir. much sure yes. Very definitely good. in future. Yes, definitely. Uh, you, uh, doctor, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, what, what, uh, what kind of you know, patients you are getting in your hospital nowadays, whether acute diseases or chronic diseases or uh, all type of cases you people are managing in your college hospital? So, uh, so, how many patients are there oh, in your hospital? No, no. Actually, uh, my OPD, most of the patients I get is PCOD, sir. Oh, PCOD. that is, but we know that <laughs> last time we have a wonderful yes. discussion on PCOD. PCOD infertility. Most of uh, nowadays, I actually, I I really feel pity for the girls, the young girls. Actually, I really feel pity. They they are landing up in PCOD. At least I think at least six to seven girls out of ten are landing up in PCOD. <laughs> that is really pathetic to see. I feel really sorry for those girls because uh, it's it's really a very what do you what do you say it's a disaster I can say. Yes, definitely. This is what happens in our in and around the world now because the, the total the lifestyle itself is entirely different from what uh, we have some ten or fifteen years back. That's the reason why uh, this kind of uh, things happens uh, in even around the world. Not only in, uh, all those things were there in the Western countries uh, some years back, but we can uh, see everything in even the lifestyle, uh, the modification that are that are the biggest. That is the biggest reason for that kind of change, and that's why uh, um, even uh, children below uh, eight uh, eight year itself started means the menarche starts at the early age itself. So these are the things uh, we will have to look into. So our homeopathic yeah. medicines are there to correct yes. almost all those things, and we will have to study and work. And to lifestyle, do. lifestyle correction is very important, sir. Exactly. Along with medicine, medicine like lifestyle correction is it plays a very major role. Yes. And also, I have I have heard someone saying, uh, like uh, infertility is deadlier than corona. Exactly, exactly. This is nowadays happening. So, and now it's the corona time to find the definitely. Corona killed people and uh, PCOD is uh, causing no uh, no births. That is, it is causing infertility. Unable to conceive. Yes, and now I invite uh, Dr. Mas to say what are thanks to this session. Dr. Mas, please unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, Yes. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Danesh. Uh, actually, I came in late because I had something on. I managed to listen to the last fifteen minutes of the discussion, and I know I've missed a lot. I would like to thank all the uh, uh committed uh practitioners of homeopathy who have relentlessly, you know, continuously um sharing their experiences, um for the good of homeopathy, and I hope, uh, this um kind of discussions should continue for the for 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 the growth of homeopathy worldwide. Thank you so much, Dr. Danish and all the participants participants. Thank you once again. Yes, uh, yes the, thank you, Dr. Maswa. He's from Malaysia and uh, it's a really a very good session. All in all, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Diti Anand and those who participated in the session. And tomorrow we will have the as uh, meeting at the same time with uh, Dr. Sumana Kumari Pandey and she, Dr. will be presently talking about esophageal varices, a case of uh, sulfur. So that's the uh, uh, session tomorrow at the same time. You can use the same link tomorrow, no change in the link for tomorrow. So uh, we will be uploading the uh, uh, presentation of the day uh, tomorrow itself. So you can watch again and again and you can also make your comment on the 
videos itself so that that will give more of participants in the later part of our sessions also thank you thank all you. good night thank you namaste thank you